She inputs the value two and completes the level. On the next level, she observes a new block of code. Hmm. So if I input the value seven, it should return the third line of code and three lines should be executed. Next, she inputs the value eight, but uh-oh, it appears that it is a redundant input. So she ends up taking damage from the enemy. Darn it, I guess that was a bad input. So in order to complete the level, she enters unique and efficient test cases that can complete the level without taking any damage. And just like this, Matilda is able to learn about statement coverage while having fun at the same time. Wow, this is kind of fun. I want to play some more. So given our game design, we wanted to see if the elements we introduced increased enjoyment, engagement, and the quality of learning. And to measure this, we had to create a non-gamified version uh, where we took out the graphics and the sounds and other gamification elements, leaving a more generic design to act as our control. And with these two versions, we conducted an experiment using a within subjects design where each participant is exposed to all the possible treatments. We did this because Regardless of the version, the subject uh, would have to complete three statement coverage tasks with an optional fourth level. The fourth level was made optional as an additional measurement to see if the gamified version uh, was more effective and more engaging. This was basically because if the person was more engaged and in, enjoyed the experience, they would be more inclined to play the extra level. And through this behavior, we could actually measure the level of enjoyment from our participants. We wanted each participant to go through both conditions to see how they would rate the gamified version compared to the non-gamified. Uh, however, the order in which they played each version could prime the participants, meaning that an individual's expectations or feedback could be uh, based on the previous experience. And therefore we had to balance the order between our subjects. So this graphic shows how our sample was split and half of them would play the gamified version first or vice versa. And after each, uh, after each person completed a version, they would fill out a survey regarding their enjoyment, engagement, quality of learning and minimality of test suites. Now we had to do this because um, although we were, um, it's difficult to measure the enjoyment, uh, engagement and quality of learning of a person. So we had to, in order to quantify and operationalize this data, we had to ask them through a survey. And in order to fully measure the effects of a cover bot, as I said before, we created a non-gamified version, which we will show right now. So here's the demo of our non-gamified version. May I just give a 10 minute mark Maybe at the moment? You click into the application, you are brought to this screen where you can see a lot of UI changes. So instead of having the graphics of cover bot and the enemy, we now just have a white block that will print uh, statements and act as a console. And basically it's a way for the system to communicate with the user. And with the removal of the uh, graphics and animations, we also remove the combat system and the level progression aspects of the game. So the user will no longer be fighting enemies or battling as they progress, but the methods will still be getting harder um, and increasing in difficulty. Additionally, we also removed all forms of uh, sound effects and music that were present in the uh, original cover bot. So you will approach a problem in this version the same way you complete a level in cover bot. Uh, for example, if we input the value seven here, it will still show three markers and it will tell us to input another value until the problem is complete. So uh, essentially, we just removed all the essential gamification features, but kept the minimum amount of functions needed in order to have a proper program. If the user inputs the same redundant input in this version, there won't be any form of punishment applied to the user since we don't have any health bars or anything of that nature. So yeah, that is the demo of the ungamified version of CoverBot.
So with these two versions, we asked our research advisors to send an email to their classes to collect uh, interested participants through a Google form. And these are the demographics of our participants. We had a total of 20 participants split evenly between 10 male and 10 female. There, were, uh, there was an ethnically and racially diverse set of participants because we wanted to make sure there was no bias toward any specific group for whoever played the game. Uh, about 15 of the individuals were aged between 18 and 22 years old with only two being older than 25. Uh, majority of the participants had around two to three years of coding experience, while only less than 5% had, or 25% had less than one year of experience. This was important because we learned that the game required the user to actually trace and read through the code. So therefore, our, our data indicated that those with at least two years of coding experience performed the best. And 60% of the participants had no idea what the statement coverage was prior to going into the experiment. Uh, here are our key findings after analyzing the data from our participants. And these data, these values were statistically significant as mentioned in our paper. And the participants on average uh, gave us a 4.35 rating out of five for enjoyment. And this is 1.4 points higher than the non gam five. This is because participants responded that the animations and sounds immersed them in the experience and made it more enjoyable. And in addition to enjoyment, we asked them about their engagement and the participants rated engagement a 4.3 rating out of five, which is only 0.85 points higher than the non gam five. This is because some participants did admit that the animations and sounds slightly distracted them from learning statement coverage, even if the game was more enjoyable. And, and actually an interesting thing we found towards the beginning was that most participants were not putting much effort into the non gamified version. This is because um, they didn't uh, feel the incentive to perform better. And with this, we measured their performance and efficiency because we found this interesting fact and we wanted to see the trend. And what we found was that in Coverbot, there is a 10% higher uh, success rate for each level. And this is because the GUI of Coverbot uh, with the health bars and the characters and the animations, it gives a stronger incentive for the player to perform better. And these attempts here represent um, how efficient their test suite would be. Because basically, uh, if you took fewer inputs to complete a level, that means your test cases cover more lines of code and therefore it's more efficient. And as you can see here, yeah, Coverbot was more, uh, had a higher success rate. And to gauge their understanding of statement coverage, after um, each version we asked, or after the entire experiment, we asked them to define statement coverage and if they would apply it. And eight out of the 12 participants um, actually were able to successfully describe what statement coverage is, um, not knowing it prior to the experiment. And they explained it as reaching all lines of code or trying to execute all the lines uh, with few test cases. So here we clearly saw that Coverbot still was able to teach participants about statement coverage effectively while making it much more enjoyable and engaging. And our feature work. Um, there are many new days to explore with our research. Um, we could implement different gamification ideas such as multiplayer because um, games are just more enjoyable with friends. And this multiplayer feature could, we could implement that uh, the players would race each other through the levels we could also implement a leaderboard system uh, that incorporates a point system based on uh, accuracy uh, and speed. Also, we could uh, implement better animations and sounds to better immerse the ex player in the experience. Other areas we could investigate um, are test suite reduction, fuzzing, and performance testing because we focus on statement coverage here, but gamification can be applied to many various software testing areas. And given more time, we could have um, gotten a larger population pool, which would provide us with more accurate results. And we could also implement different iterations of Coverbot, testing different gamification elements and seeing how they correlate. Overall, developing a game to help students learn and contribute to the to learn and contributing to the research community was a great experience. And here's a summary side of our research for any questions that you may have. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much uh, for this very interesting presentation.
I also got some time updates. Um, and you're just right in that spot, uh, 20 minutes for the presentations. And so we take maybe 10 to 15 minutes for uh, questions. Um, because we have quite a number of participants, I would suggest maybe using uh, the raise hand button um, in Zoom rather than uh, just unmuting. Um, so there is a way under um, a participant button. If you're on the app, you can see a, a participant uh, button on the uh, lower end. And there you have a uh, opportunity, I think, oh, yeah, to raise, um, to raise the hand digitally. And it will also kind of first in, first out, uh, get you into queue. Um, so I would like to open for questions. All right, let's start with uh, Vladimir, please. Go ahead. Yeah, so hi, everyone. Uh, this was a really interesting presentation. So I, I was wondering, um, yeah, uh, if if there are any plans like to measure how how effective is is this game at at teaching the the, the concept, the testing concepts, because, well, it's in, in the results of your investigation of this investigation, you showed that, well, it was engaging and it was, it was enjoyable and enjoyable experience, but how, how much does, does it help, uh, help the students? Like, is there any, any plans to, to get into, into that kind of research? So that, that will be my, my question. Um, although, uh, I can take this one, but uh, although uh, there was a, a time constraint, so it was difficult to uh, accurately see if they understood statement coverage, as you said, but um, we initially built this, or made this game as a, uh, a tool for um, like a, a typical classroom setting that they could use to teach the students. So given more time and possibly more resources, we could in the future, actually apply it into um, one of our professor's curriculums. And then they could use this program to see, and then we can actually test the students and give them a test based on uh, their experience with the game to see if they understood the same coverage better. So, yeah. Um, also, I would just like to add, um, so as far as um, like uh, just measuring how much they learn goes, um, we did, uh, we did measure, uh, or we did record that eight of the, um, eight of the 12 people uh, who, um, so there, there are 20 participants total essentially, and 12 of them uh, said they never heard of statement coverage before or didn't um, know about the concept or the principle. And then uh, afterwards uh, of playing through CoverBot, um, eight of the 12 were able to you know, accurately depict uh, and and describe the principle of statement coverage, and you know, um, and in the future, hopefully, apply it to their um, test cases as well. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I will ask uh, another, if I may. Sure. It's like uh, also, is there is there any any way in which you can include the, like other other kinds of testing uh, besides like unit testing, because well, I, I, I suppose that this is more focused like on, on just unit testing on functional unit testing, but right. what about like other kinds of, of tests? Uh, yeah, I think, well, for this game, we wanted to focus on like beginner programmers. So that's why we focus on unit testing and statement coverage. But in the future, we could like expand on the game and like create um, like harder levels or harder, like implement it with harder concepts that are like that people in like um, more advanced uh, computer science, like to have more advanced computer science knowledge could like use this program as well. 
Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. That will be all for me. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, nice job. Great. Thank you. Um, let's move on to Axel Böttcher, please. Yeah, yeah sure. right. thank you. Um, I have a comment and a question. Uh, the first thing that came up to my mind is to integrate mutation testing into this game. I uh, would like this very much because I like this kind of games. And if you know mutation testing like PIT does, would be a perfect fit to your environment. But that brings me to my question. Um, what is the effort to program this environment? And do you personally think it was worth it? Um, I'll answer this one. Um, so yeah, mutation testing is actually a, a really interesting comment. Um, well, like a big part of our, I guess, um, inspiration or like build off was code defenders, um, which also um, goes into mutation testing. Um, and we mentioned in our related works, but um, yeah, so in terms of um, effort and time that was put into building the program, um, we did it through a, uh, a game engine called Unity. Um, and Unity is, um, I guess, if you compare it to other game engines and um, uh, software that help you develop games, uh, Unity is more of a, it's easier to learn uh, than other than other software and um, it's more beginner friendly. So in terms of time um, that we put into it and the and uh, the results that we got out of it, um, I think I, I do believe it was worth it for um, um, to, to gather the results that we did. Right, thank you. Um, let's move on to Thomas Auer, please. Hello, this is Thomas. It was a very, very interesting uh, presentation. My, my question is, because I come from, from, from the industry, do you see also an opportunity to operate this, uh, this game cover her but at, uh, at at the industry for example for first for further edu education of uh, of the software developers or also of software quality uh, quality assurance uh, test testing experts for example for first education in test automation or is it explicitly for for the education at the universe at the universities that would be my questions that would be very interesting, quite interesting for me <laughs> yes Let's go. okay i'll answer again um so i think for the purposes of uh this research paper we wanted to focus on um simply uh, the learning process of statement coverage. So I don't know about applying it to, you know, perhaps the industry or, you know, actual software developers and potentially helping them. But the goal of our research was actually just to have, um, like, uh, for example, um, the scenario that we used in our demonstration was a, um, in a, uh, a computer scientist, like in their introductory computer uh, science courses. So, you know, they were just um, beginning to grasp uh, coding and learning about, you know, uh, what different principles there are to software testing. And I think those are the, um, the prime like uh, subjects that we want, we wanted um, our, uh, um, I guess our game to be uh, played with. Hmm, more interesting. So focus or especially also on first year students of computer science and similar subjects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, thank you. We do still have a few minutes for questions. If there are any more. Okay, Ben, Ben Kleck, please go ahead. Ben, I can see you raising the hand. 
Okay, sure. One moment. All right. In the meantime, if there is no other question, um, I might have a small one myself regarding the evaluation. Um, so uh, to see if uh, attempt of gamification work versus non-gamification. Um, I'm curious if you did see any um, tendency towards from, so as I understand, this is for novice programmers um, mainly, um, but still to see a difference from very simple programs to a little bit more complex programs. Uh, if gamification, if, if you saw a trend, let's say getting more effective or less effective for uh, more complex programs. Uh, I'll take this one. That's a great point. And um, uh, what you didn't see in the demo is that we have two additional levels, which are of, um, I believe, we believe, a greater difficulty than the first two. And we did see a trend is that. Um, those with less uh, coding experience, as you mentioned, uh, they did um, had a harder challenge with those uh, future levels. And um, in fact, some of our participants um, didn't couldn't complete the gamified one as their uh, their health went to zero. And what we can do is um, with that, I think that we can just uh, make harder levels for those with more experience and then keep. Uh, basically manage the uh, level of, of difficulty better for novice and create a novice version and a more advanced version. That's a great point. Yeah. Okay, so that would be um, more on the side of game dynamics, I guess, rather than the uh, uh, program difficulty. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so can you, just, oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yeah um, sorry about the issues on my mic earlier. Uh, I am afraid I no joined problem. partway through because of uh, some issues of the uh, stream or whatever. Um, yeah, um, I guess my question is how did you decide to, um, how, was it? how do I say, um, what was the procedure you used for um, determining like what, what to include in tests for the uh, later levels? Uh, so, like, say, uh, to produce some form of uh, progression in difficulty. Um, I'll take this one again. Basically, uh, because we've gone through our own uh, courses in the introductory programming um, at our university, we had, like, a lot of references to use as um, our own classes got harder. So in the future levels, we just implemented um, things that, advanced or uh, novice programmers would see eventually, which would be like Boolean operators and um, more branches uh, and that sort. That would, yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Okay, maybe one more question I see in the comments from Alicia, uh, maybe that ties a little bit into the question we heard earlier. Um, if it's worth the effort, um, how difficult it is um, to add a new question or a new level. So what is the, the efforts that needs to be put in? Um, I can take this one, but uh, with the Unity game engine, it was, uh, I think, pretty doable to keep on adding levels and it wasn't too difficult. And yeah, I think it, it was, um, like it was worth it because each level we were able to, we got like progressively harder. We were able to see like um, whether like gamification was still um, effective when wanting to like teach, when wanting to use it to like teach students and things like that. So I think it was like, it was doable and it was, um, and it was like effective and uh, easier to, uh, and still easy to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more from Valmir, please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, it just occurred to me that, uh, yeah, it's, it's there an indication of which programming language are, are they using or they, are they trying to test? And if, and if so, have you thought about including like other, other kinds of languages that are not only imperative, like for example, uh, functional or declarative languages? 
Uh, yeah, so um, as you can see from that screenshot we have pulled up, actually. Um, so we, we used actually very generic, uh, generic like forms of, I guess, um, uh, functionalities that you have within different um, programming languages. So, you know, like if else statements, um, we have for loops, we have um, Booleans. Um, but in the later levels, as you see, um, our syntax uh, for the functions that we're using um, kind of revolve more around uh, C, I would say, the C programming language. But um, I mean, even just um, anyone who would have, you know, one year of experience, whether it be in, um, you know, Python, uh, Java, and kind of script, um, I, I think they would be able to decipher the uh, the um, the functions and read through them and still be able to use the software to its maximum uh, potential, even if they you know don't have that uh, exact prior experience with C. And I think that's one of the benefits of us focusing on uh, novice programmers and introductory um, computer scientists rather than um, the more advanced um, other kind of uh, test suites. Yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, what uh, what about like uh, another like kind of paradigms like using using like functional functional programming? Um, because, well, it's it's kind of different how you write something in in a pure functional language like like Haskell, let's say. Right. Because like right, right. yeah, you don't have variable assignments and and whatnot. Yeah, uh, that's actually a really good point. Um, I, I think. Um, maybe that's a little bit outside of the scope of our research for this then. Um, I think we just wanted to focus on um, sort of uh, object-oriented programming that um, use the, the syntax that we use in our levels. Actually, I could just jump in here for a second. Um, one unique element of the implementation of CoverBot is that the, um, the tracking of the um, test cases and the presentation in the visualization are actually independent. So in fact, um, a functional version of this program could be provided um, even though it still has the C or Java-like program in the background. So as long as equivalent functionalities can be constructed, the separation of the um, execution of the presentation in the game uh, can handle that. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's see if there is any other question. I think we're well in time. So thank you again uh, for this very interesting presentation and a great already kickoff for um, a discussion. And uh, I would suggest we move on to our second paper. So I think this is uh, presented by Thomas Auer, if I see this, this correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so again, my apologies for, uh, I have no information about the presenters. <laughs> um, to maybe introduce uh, yourself briefly and then move on to the presentation, please. So you have the floor. Yeah, first share the screen. Mm -hmm. And as I see, we have 20 minutes roughly for the presentation. I'll give you a 10 minutes and 15 minutes mark. Sure. It's also possible to share the, the whole the whole des desktop. It is possible, yeah. It should be um, the first uh, se selection out of the um, shareable screens. Ah, the basic. Mm -hmm. Right. Go back to meeting. Shop share. So. Mm -hmm. 
Mhm. Ah, okay. The fourth selection PowerPoint is watch background. Mhm. Basic. Ah, okay. I think I can see it. I think at the moment it's only the email screen or yeah, that is visible. I see it now. Uh, we can only see um, Outlook at the moment. Okay. Now? Still the same as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. Development again first. If it is PowerPoint, you can also target um, the PowerPoint application um, directly. It's to power, share. PowerPoint, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, PowerPoint, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I have it, yes. Mm -hmm. So I will share directly the power of PowerPoint. Yes. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you see it now? Or? On my side, it's still um, the Outlook window. I think you have to close once and then reopen the sharing screen. Uh, Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So let me share again. No. All right. Yeah, this looks correct. Great. Yeah. Okay. You can see that's the first slide now. Game for okay. Right. You have the floor. Go ahead. Okay. You can also hear me, everyone. Okay. Yes. My name. My name is. My name is Thomas Auer. Basically, I'm working in the role of a test analyst at Capgemini, Germany, basically in the center of excellence for automation integration. And additionally, I just work on my PhD thesis. It's on the topic, Internet of Things, Testing Education at the Institute of Computer Science of the University of Innsbruck in Austria. Well, why? We decided for work on a, a, a virtual simulation game on Inter of Things testing. Well, the fact is that Inter of Things testing differs significantly from classical software testing. For example, if you do web, web application testing, desktop application testing, the reason therefore is that for testing Inter of, of Things is part of a uh, of an, of, of an environment, you have embedded hardware, and the, which is in, in included in IoT environments. So not only the, the, the devices, but the complete environment with the embedded hard hardware, or this inter interacting together. And so we decided, what can we do? Or which are, which are, which are, Learning paths are already existing. For example, the Inter International Software Testing Qualification Sport, ISTQB, already provides a certification path, the Certified Internet of Things Professional, which focuses also on Internet of Things testing. But this is only theoretical. It's a, usually a three days theoretical training, which uh, will be completed with a, with a multiple cho choice test. But to learn uh, interactively, to, to learn really good Internet of Things testing, you also need to learn to work with the, with the integrated physical devices. And therefore, you need a learning environment where you can all have also access to the, to the environment so that you also can experience the devices included in this environment. So far. In this study, we first analyze the possibilities which exist to teach testing of Internet of Things environments and which opportunities are also existing to provide further education in Internet of Things testing also for persons who have not the possibility to attend the training measure on site. So, the solution 
I present today is not it's not a final it's not a final solution. Basically, we are still at the end of the theoretical evaluation. And now we just start with the practical impl implementation of this environment. So our approach is a simulation game, which consists of a simulated learning environment. But uh, thereby, we focus on, on teamwork. As to mention, it's a multiplayer game. And our intention is that the teams can also compete against other, uh, other teams. So in the ideal case, two or more teams play the, 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 the same game level simultaneously so that they compare each other. But we don't want, uh, want that uh, single, single, single players play the game if you're playing the game for you alone because our focus should be on teamwork because it's very important also in real world IoT testing projects. Well, so in our first learning unit, we, so our intention is to focus on, 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 on a real world situation. So we decided for a case study for testing self-driving vehicle, such as I will also Mention later, I will also describe this in a, in a later stage. Wall. The following sheet, we can, we can see the, the architecture of the learning envir environment. We provide it was in our virtual classroom. This uh, also has a meeting room. You can also which are switched to break rooms so that uh, team members, for example, in, in different roles, for example, test automation engineers or test, uh, test analysts can, can meet together, for example, for, 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 for a standard, sort of stand-up meeting or for this discuss an approach. The tools and the simulation devices will be provided from a, from a, from a trainer, which uh, takes on the role of the client in each in a virtual game unit. And he can also, he will also be responsible to, to teach, to teach the team. Yes, it the, the takes on the role of the client, but the, due to the fact that, uh, that, that it's, a, it's a learning game, so the players can also ask him or her question, uh, questions on special, assignment, for example, how to implement, implement a test autom automation framework. Well, the moment will be, uh, will be developed with, uh, in, the course, in the course of a component uh, bachelor thesis. So I will collaborate with a student. He will work on the, on the impl implementation of the, of the simulated environment and I compare it in the part of a component research where I investigate the science science of the learning environment. And simultaneously, I also work on a physical on a, on a physical environment because in the first stage it should be extended to a digital twin physical and simulative learning environment. Well, Well, we will start in the year 2021 with a case study with trial learners. This can be as well students at universities as also professionals and young professionals in the field of software, software development, or especially soft, software quality assurance testing, who are in the, interested in further education in Internet of Things testing. So in the first assignment, same as the, op the test object will be a self-driving car at a traffic light co con controlled intersection. And so forth, there are two, uh, two aspects to test. The first is a line, line keeping as uh, assistant. So one, one requirement is that, uh, that the vehicle keeps us the track and turn, turn left and right 
on to on to on to the track. And the, 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 the second requirement is that, 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 that the vehicle needs to recognize the status of the traffic lights. The vehicle so should, should, uh, should uh, stop if the traffic light status is, is a throat, should start if the traffic light status is, 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 yellow, is yellow, and drive if the traffic light status is green. And this can also be extended that also traffic signs need to be recognized via light sensors or also obstacles, pedestrians who are crossing the road should can be recognized via distance sensors. Well, this will be the case study we plan to perform in the end of the fourth quarter of the year 2021 after completion of the, of the first realization of the first learning unit with, with a group of, uh, of eight to 10 test learners who will attend the first trial learning unit. All. So what is the, the game process? Persons, people who are interested in further education in end of things uh, testing in IoT, uh, IoT City Lab will be invited to an assessment center with a specialized trainer who will later also, also be the client, will hold on the, the, the client and the trainer for the individual learning unit. First, it starts with the assessment center. It means the trainer performs an interview with, uh, with, with persons who are interested in, in further education in the course of a gamified, gamified learning unit. He discuss with them the, the current experiences, the current know, state of knowledge, and especially important, what are the learning objectives? So in, in which field of Internet of Things testing they want to specialize to qualify in, in, in future. Afterwards, it's up for 10 minutes, uh, Mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then the, um, the, 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 the trainer assigns them to an appropriate learn, learning group. And then so the, the learning group will meet first in the virtual meeting room. And so we'll build, build up an agile team. Then focus now on the, on, 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 the case, on the case study that can also be extended. So in the case study, so the client will release a budget for a scrum master, a product owner, and for developer team, which consists of four to six persons. In this case, this uh, developer team consists of uh, test analysts and test automation engineers. So the client expects a full automate, uh, automated regression test set for testing the lane keeping assistant and the traffic light recognition of the autonomous vehicle. After, afterwards, after completion of the learning unit, the team will meet again to analyze the learning progress in the team and also to discuss together with the trainer how they can improve themselves as well the, the, the current knowledge, the uh, current experiences, but also more important, the abilities for team uh, for teamwork in further engagements. And finally, the, tra the trainer announces the scores of the of the, of the individual of the individual roles. So the roles again, the so the client, it's, it's uh, simultaneously it's the trainer, the team lead. He takes on the role of the, of, of the client of the project, but he also gives instruct, instructions to the learner and he's the reader of, of, the, of the game. Then we have a product owner. He or she is responsible for the management of the product backlog. He, is the, he or she is the only person 
who can decide about the, the, the end of a sprint. And he or she is also the only point of contact, the only contact person to the, to the, to the, to the client. Then we have test analysts. They will design the, 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 test, the test plan in close uh, collaboration with the product owner. And finally, they will design the regression test set. Then the test automation engineers come into play. They will automate the, the regression test set. And finally, one person who has the role of the Scrum Master, he or she is responsible for the moderation of the daily standup meetings and for the, 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 the per, for per project course is running, is, is running all, all the time. So Angela most project, project envir environment. Then we come to the scoring of the game. Well, you can on the credits, the Scrum Master, for example, can on, this is also an approach it's, it's not the, the, the final scoring. It can still be, be, be changed or updated. It's only an approach now. So for example, in, in, the, in the case study, Scrum Master gets one credit for each successful mediation, uh, mediation of contributions during daily standups. The product owner can get one, uh, one credit for each accepted ar artifact by, by the client. Test analysts get, uh, get one credit, for example, for each release te test case. And test automation engineers can earn one credit for each successful automated test case. But there's, uh, there's rich scores. On the, um, um, among the, 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 the players, uh, the same uh, of the same team will not be compared in the end, because then it's not, it's, not, uh, the, it's not the focus on, on, on teamwork anymore. They should not comp compete against each other, but the, the intention is that they work close together. And so far, we don't want a competition between the individual team members. So in the end, the total score of each rules will be summarized to the total score of the team. And then, it's, uh, of course, it's interesting if more, two or more teams play this as a game at the same time, each, uh, each, uh, each the same uh, learning unit, so that the total score and also the experiences can be compared in, 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 the, in, in the end. It's a 15 the... minutes mark now. Okay. 15 minutes. So what are the benefits? of IoT City, uh, City Lab. We provide role-based collaborative lessons. We provide customized learning units. So it means each individual learning unit will be, uh, will be uh, customized related to the individual learning objectives. We offer a gamified approach for an interactively kinesthetic learning of IoT testing with, ac with access to the, as well to a simulative and later also to the physical environment. With, uh, with gamified elements, for example, you can earn score scores and you can convert, the team can compare it in the end with comp competing teams. It is a multiplayer game. And I want to mention again, is it is explicitly a multiplayer game because the focus should be on teamwork. So also in first stage of development, it should not be possible to play it as a single player. And it's a modal game design, it means it starts with our initial building block. This would be the case study in each building block, which can be compared as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a project, as a sprint, builds up on each other until uh, we will provide a, a, a full IoT city environment. Well, as a cont contribution for industry and science, for, for students, we offer target integral further training, especially, uh, especially for those who plan, uh, plan a future career in Internet of Things testing, promoting TA teams, uh, team skills. And uh, for professionals, 
the focus the focus is on on the on the further education related to the career perspectives in the, in which field the, the employee the specialist want want to want to specialize in in future and also to improve this this this, this course experiences for for teamwork and we offer a present today topic this testing or autonomous vehicle which is a topic which is really up up to date as also the opportunity for real world engagements in this field in automotive or automotive suppliers so what are the prospects yes the simulative learning environment will be extended to a digital twin consisting of a simulative and a physical environment the physical environment will be developed with with, with lego with lego mindstorms and as i mentioned already in a further stage of development also additional roles can be can, can join a, 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 a game a game level so then we can also it's also an opportunity for example to provide uh, lesser game levels for unit uh, for, for unit testers for load and performance te testers for test uh, test test data ma managers and so and so on the learning environment should be in available with a, with a pc or a tablet pc in later stages also with data classes as well as windows android apple and linux technology and this will be a part of the of the further research we want to analyze how some, the similarity of the, the means the, the similar simulative learning environment should adopt the, the physical environment as close as possible so the both environments in the digital twin should be as similar as possible for sure 100 per 100 percent equivalence is 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 not is not possible because especially for for io things you need to walk with 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 the, with the hardware you need to have access to the to the to the devices in, which are part of the environment but we want uh, for those who have no access to the physical environment we want to analyze on which level we can provide Africa learning as close as possible to the real world in a simulative environment. So in all in all, each individual game unit will contribute to for the further development of the watch smart city environment. And also the focus is on testing and quality assurance in later stages, also team, teams of developers, operators, support engineers are invited to join to attend a, a game a game level and also then we can also hire tra tra trainers which will develop also learning units in the course of a, of a, of a game unit for so for, for those persons so it should be an open environment everyone as well per persons uh, person from science as also from industry industry or even persons who are interested uh, in, in first location in inter things testing can can join can join a, ga a, ga a game level can apply for to play one 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 level or even uh, more levels with within a team with uh, learners with the, with the, the same or with similar learning objectives. That is our big goal. Yes, so I'm through with my with my presentation, and as I mentioned, we are just the uh, start of the of the development stage. Now I'm looking forward. Your question to answer your questions. Right. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Um, let's see and cue again a few uh, questions. 
and feel free to use that raise hand button to queue in a few questions. I do have one question maybe to um, kick the session off um, about, you're mentioning that, so it should be an environment which could be used both by uh, professionals and um, yes, students. Exactly. Um, I would be curious about what are the main differences, especially if it comes to um, programming for IoT um, that you can see between novices and experienced programmers. What's especially interesting, Seba, is, is uh, the level of knowledge. Usually, students uh, have more programming skills, uh, but then as uh, professionals in the field of uh, quality assurance, they have experience in the respective domain and in the respective uh, testing methods, frameworks, and also in the, in the, the tools, maybe, maybe also in, 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 in program, programming languages. So we need to, uh, we also want to, uh, our intention is also to, to, uh, to perform uh, learning with, with mixed ga uh, games, uh, with mixed teams of uh, students and professionals so that they can share the knowledge so that uh, each each one can con contribute with, uh, with his or her con stay, uh, st uh, status of, of knowledge. So maybe students have more knowledge in programming languages and experienced software testers have already more experience in testing, testing methods and testing frameworks. And so it I could imagine that a professional takes on the role of, a, of the test analyst and a student takes on the role of the test automation engineer because this role could be predestinated for persons with, with uh, advanced coding knowledge. And so the, the, the students have the opportunity to get in touch with, 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 with real world projects because this will help them later when they start their career in the industry. And the experienced testers can, lo can learn of the students, for example, if they want to need, need them more knowledge in the field of coding, for example, in, 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 Python, in, in Python development, or also in designing of, 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 of hardware so that each one, one can learn from each other. And so it's also important that we build mix, mixed teams. Well, it's, it's a responsibility of the respective trainer, the mentioned, who will also be the, the team lead. He assigns the, the, the intercept persons to the respective learning group, which will play a, a, a game level. But our intention is that mixed teams of, uh, of students and professionals play together in one learning group within one team of software IoT testers. Okay, thank you. I especially like the idea that um, both sides could uh, benefit from, yes. from that kind of, of system. Yeah. That's, very, that's very important for us, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's also called a as mentioned, it's also collaboration between industry and the university, and we want all to also for focus on it, also in the also for the case studies. So we'll invite as well professionals, also students of all levels, as well beginners as also in the higher in the higher semesters. Right. And not only okay, students, also, have... also trainees or apprentices are also invited. For example, also apprentices in, in, com in computing or information technology careers. Right. Yeah, I can see that um, it's quite practically oriented. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. At the moment, I don't see any um, raised hands. 
So I'll leave a little bit the floor open still for questions. Everybody, please feel free to jump in. Right, Vladimir, please go ahead. Yeah, um, well, it was a nice presentation, but I, I have a question. Like, what do you think is like the bare minimum of, of participants or how large should the setup be to be ideally executed? Well, so the minimum of, of one learning group should be at least six persons, but ideally eight, eight or 10 persons. It's, it's also depending on the, for, for the case study, it uh, will be six to eight persons, but then it's depending on, on, on the scenario. This can also be, for example, uh, if it's only focused on, on the test, uh, test analysis, you can, we can all, it's also possible to build a, law, a learning group of, 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 of three or four persons. But if we want to simulate a, a, a big engagement, so we have, uh, therefore we need also test analysts, test data, test data, data the exports, load testers, test automation engineers, and also domain, uh, and domain exports. Then we can also be a team of 10 or 15 persons. But it, uh, it, uh, the team should also be not too, too, too large because uh, then it will be more more difficult that the the team members who are in interact together. Then it's, it means they, they should they should really close together. It's also therefore it's also the possibility to to build some, some small smaller groups. They can switch to a to a break room, and then they will meet 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 again. To this to discuss to discuss the the outcomes the outcomes in a, in a, in the, in, the, in, the, in the big audience, but uh, it should also be answered that uh, that each individual player can contribute with uh, with uh, can contribute uh, with his or her status of knowledge and can also offer a benef benefit of it that you can really learn 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 something of it he can use for. His first 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 career, and if the teams are too too large, then that the the risk that a few persons will be kicked out. They won't be recognized, and they cannot benefit anymore. Or well of 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 the learning unit, and our intention is that each individual learns can can benefit as much as possible. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. It's because I was wondering, like, how would you implement this in an organization or in a setup that mm -hmm. is not that big or it does not have that much resources? So. No, it's 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 also it's open, yes. Mm -hmm. So, if, but at least at least at least three or four persons for each individual learning unit. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Right, thank you. Welcome. Let's welcome. See if there are any more questions. I do have one that uh, I am curious about myself and uh, also Patricia, uh, Professor Brockman. Uh, she's an expert in um, distributed global software engineering. Mm -hmm. um, if you had already some experience of let's uh let's say in person having experience with the system and uh compared that to um people let's say on on different time schedules uh locally um distributed okay. mm -hmm. you mean it uh what will be provided mm -hmm. for of the local location of the teams mm -hmm. Right. If that will be possible, or if if you yes. already had experience and uh, how that might have influenced, or how mm -hmm. would you see that? That is what what we what we invest in we investigate uh, what we want to investigate in in the trial in the trial learning unit because we want to we want to play it with uh, 
we want to perform it with distributed teams. For example, this thing can be the teams that are at different organizations, not only at Capgemini, at different universities, or also at uh, at, at, school, at at school at schools for apprentices, for example. Example, and uh, also the, the the location. It was it should be possible to play it from from all from all over the, the world. It's which it's different technologies. Mm -hmm. And this will be the, the big challenge we want to evaluate how this working with participants of different locations with different te 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 technologies. So this is more the technical aspect and the more educational aspects is uh, also present uh, with, diff with, diff with different backgrounds, but with the same or with similar learning or career objectives that will also be object a uh, research object and it's also be um, finally will also be evaluated and it's also planned to provide uh, to to uh, provide it with a, with a, in, a, in, a, in a in a research paper so right. the next step is uh, the next step would be is, is a design of both physical, the similar different physical environment. Then we evaluate the, the, the digital twin, and in the, in, the, in the last stage, we evaluate the case, the case, the case study, with trial learners. And this will be, in fact, a distributed team. That will be very interesting to see. Yeah, this um, will be the compare. most, the most, uh, the most exciting, the most interesting, the most in mm -hmm. exciting stage of the, of, the, of the whole research project. I'm also very curious about it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think as I don't see any more questions, um, thank you again for the presentation. And uh, I would suggest maybe having a five minute break before we go to our last presentation because we're right now halfway at least for the time slot that we we have provided um and i'm not yet sure if we uh use the whole time slot but um now seems to be a good time to take a five minute break and if possible just please stay in uh the zoom meeting and uh just switch off a video audio and we'll start back at, um, what time is it now in Germany? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, it's 3.25 it's it's now in Germany. <laughs> 3.25. Thank you. So uh, 3.30, um, let's convene back here again and continue with the last presentation. Okay. So half okay, past thank three. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay.
All right, welcome back. I think now that's, there was a question about recording, but I think that's fine. Just a few minutes off and it was announced anyway, so it should be okay. All right, welcome back. I'm already seeing some rejoining. Welcome. All right, so for the last presentation, um, just to get ready, I saw Leonardo Andrade. Um, Ah, you're here, thank you. So you will present yes. the next paper, that's right? Yes. Okay, and I also heard from your supervisor, I think, uh, Vera Veronek. And let's see how many are back. It might take one or two additional minutes. Okay, thank you for the preparation. And um, right, so just again, uh, welcome back to everyone who is in the stream again. Um, and just to keep, I know that over time, the rate of kind of people dropping out with video is getting higher. Um, if you can and your bandwidth allows, um, uh, please join with a video. It's much easier for uh, the presenters and uh, who are asking questions to interact. And then I would leave the floor to Leonardo Andrade. Please go ahead. So you have about 20 minutes. I'll give you a 10 minutes and 15 minutes mark. Um, just a heads up. OK, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Leonardo Andrade. I'm here with the professors Marcelo Schott and Vera Maria Werneck and, my, and with my colleague Eric Greenberg to present our paper entitled Inspector X 2.0, Developing a Multi-Device Game for Software Inspection Education. Software inspection is a human-based process to detect defects in software artifacts. It consists of a rigorous visual review that enables the detection of defects in several artifacts in software development. Uh, inspections are important to improve software quality and reduce the work costs that would occur if errors were found in the development and testing process. Here, here is an example of software inspection process proposed by Sauer um, in, 2000, in 2000. It consists of the following step. One, for the planning step, for the planning, the software inspection, one related to the discovery of the facts. One involves the collection of the facts. Uh, the next one is the discrimination of the facts to remove false positives and so on. And there is also the rework step in which the authors correct the artifacts that in which the facts were identified. And the follow-up step, the moderator evaluates whether a new inspection is necessary. The inspection process involves developers and other individuals in a process aim to find defects and anomalies in, soft, in software artifacts. The key factor in a software review is the inspector's level of expertise and alternative related roles. Um, 
To help training future inspectors, the Inspector X game was proposed. The original version of Inspector X was written in C-sharp and it was developed based on a three-layer architecture. It has an external model called Artifact Manager, responsible for managing taxonomies and registering defects in artifacts. It was written in Java and part of the technology used in the first ver ver version of Inspector X become obsolete, which made the game nearly inoperable. So a new version of Inspector X was proposed. As well as the first version of Inspector X, the main goal of Inspector the main goal of Inspector X 2.0 is to help training inspectors and support software soft, support software engineering education in a logical way by improving and developing the player perception in classifying and identifying the effects and anomalies in software artifacts. It consists of a practical inspection simulations, learn about software inspection, their role is in this process, and also the concept of the taxonomy of the effects. The new version um, described in this work emerged with the proposal of a game that could be played on any device that contains internet connection, such as tablets, smartphones, and computers. Besides, it is known that students use different types of tools to study, and many students have a smartphone or other device. Therefore, one of the main concerns of, concerns of this version was the responsive design. The Inspector X 2.0 unified the artifact manager. Professors can, not, can add artifacts and taxonomies on the same platform and also keep track of the student's progress. So here is a screenshot from a smartphone of the page I, I add artifact. Um, to add a new software artifacts, a taxonomy must have been previously registered. The manager selects the artifact and associates it according with the taxonomy of the effect. Both the professor and, and the game manager can add, edit, or delete a taxonomy of or, or software artifact, as well as the taxonomy of the effect. However, only the manager can add any other artifacts they want, like customized taxonomies and different types of questions to apply to the students. Uh, similarly to its first version, Inspector X.0 uh, has two game modes, the effect crawler and full inspection process. In these modes, the, game, the players can gain experience points that can be used to assist the moderators when choosing inspectors in the full inspection process. The experience points and the two game modes. Mm. The defect crawler is a single player game mode that consists of the discrimination stage of the inspection proposed by Sauer. In this mode, the player inspects software artifacts aiming to identify the fact, and for each defect correctly inspected, the player gains experience points. The players can simulate the inspection of textual artifacts registered in the system, such as source code or requirements, at the different levels of difficulty. And here is an example of the defect crawler in the um, inspection of requirement. Inspection of a, a document, a, the, a requirement document. At the end of the defect crawler mode, it summarizes to the player the artifacts inspected correctly the point for each artifact, as well as the correct answer. Mm. The full inspection process is a multiplayer game mode that then simulates a software inspection process. 
proposed by Sauer through whole play. The players can assume the role of moderator and inspector, acting mainly in three stages of the inspection process, planning, detection, the stage relative to the discovery stage by Sauer, and discrimination. The first stage is the game in the game is the planning stage. Here, the moderator chooses the level of difficulty of the artifact. In the easy level, there is only one defect in each software artifact, and the line with the effect is already highlighted. The player must only classify the defect. In, in the medium level, there is also one line with the defect, but it is not shown beforehand. The player must find it and classify the defect. Uh, in hard level, there are two or more defects in the same artifact. And finally, in the mixed level, is composed of software artifacts of different le levels and types. The moderator chooses the artifact that will compose the inspection process among the artifacts previously registered in the season by a professor or instructor. And also in the planning stage, the moderator chooses the inspectors that will compose the inspection process at that, at that round. As I mentioned previously, the degree of expertise of the inspectors and the moderator is the key factor in a software inspection process for a success, successful inspection. Thus, in this version, a score was implemented aiming to players' performance on software inspection with experience point. Based on these, these experience points and additional factors at their discretion, the moderator chooses the, the factors. The players can use the, the experience points gained in the two different game modes, understanding the characteristics that contribute to a successful inspection. In the detection stage, the, the inspectors search for the effects in software artifacts that will be delivered to the moderator and identify depending on the level of difficulty aligned and the defects are causing with the taxonomy. Uh, and with each defect of taxonomy, it showed to, to the player uh, uh, one descri a description about the defect. In the discrimination stage, the inspectors and the moderator discuss the software artifact, and the moderator takes a decision whether the defect actually exists or is a false positive. To improve the player's performance in the discrimination stage and better simulate a software inspection process, Inspector X Sudato also contributes with a, an online chat that simulates a team re reunion. Chat is a common element in several games as a feature to improve the interaction between the players. For example, the moderator and the inspectors may have different opinions about software artifacts in a game round. So the chat enables them to interact with each other until they take a decision with respect to, soft so to the software artifact. Consequently, Players can learn from, from each other and share the experience. It's a 10 minute mark. Okay. Uh, at the end of the full inspection process mode, the moderator can see our report of the inspection with the, pro with the answers of all the players, as well as the expect expected answer, highlighted with a description of the fact. Players of the 2.0 version of Inspector X have a game profile in which they can see their game points, manage their personal information, and see their scores. The inspectors and the moderators can see the history, match, history of maps in the game, their experience points, and also see a report of the artifact. 
However, they can only see the answers in the match history. And here is an example of uh, a match in the game and an artifact inspected. And in, in this part, in this page, the, the inspector can see the correct defect in the artifact and see the artifact as, as well. Uh, in the previous version, the ranking was calculated by level and game mode. Therefore, players had a restricted view about their score, and moderators could not use the inspection ability in the planning stage. Inspector X to Dotto introduces a general ranking to analyze players that best assimilated inspecting inspection concept, concept in practice. Besides, encouraging players to rise in position and improve their knowledge. Um, a preliminary evaluation was conducted, aiming at identifying the necessary changes and eventual problems with Inspector X to the toe, obtaining feedback from students about its potential in the learning process, and three, testing the system usability. The evaluation was conducted with seven undergraduate students at the Rio de Janeiro State, State University uh, that simulates the full inspection process mode. The evaluation uses the SUS questionnaire and two additional questions. What did you most like? What did you like the most? Inspector X to the row, and what did you not like or change Inspector X? In the questions, what did you like the most, Inspector X? The students highlighted the ability to learn by playing and the idea of seeing the inspector's assessment and being able to draw a conclusion from, the, from that. It can be used in code reviews and possibility of learning by playing. About the question, what did you not like or would you change Inspector X? Uh, the students highlighted Confusion, it could show it could show their results to the inspector in a clearer way because every time I finished that question, I returned it to the initial screen and a more intuitive interface. With the preliminary evaluation, the, feed, the feedback from students indicates that the game has potential in promotion software inspection learning, also contributing to the inspector act to the gameplay. The, the evolutions made in the game have user interface issues, some of which were perceived during the evaluation. We already started to make some changes and fix some small defects identified at a later stage. Um, and to the future work, we intend to include some visual elements to make Inspector X 2.0 uh, more interactive and playful. Uh, the evaluation performed was of pre preliminary nature. A new evaluation is planned to assess the change in the user interface and the gameplay as a whole. And we also intend to extend Inspector X to the toll to encompass image based artifacts, a feature requested since its first version. And um, thank you. Right, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, let's open the floor again for questions. Feel free again to queue up uh, using the raise hand button. We'll jump right in if there is, okay, I already have two. So Iman, please go ahead first. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask, did participants refer or like learn more from either the defect caller or the full inspection version of the of Inspector X2.0? Mm. Can, can you repeat, please? Yeah, um, I just I wanted to know if participants uh, preferred or learned more from the defect ca crawler version or the full inspection um, version of the game. Um, in the defect caller, um, you have an, an view of 
the discrimination stage of the process, the inspection process proposed by Sauer. So in in that in in the in that game mode, the player just can inspect the artifacts previously registered in the system in any level. In the full inspection process, the the player can learn the inspection process as a whole, or at least a a a, 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 um, a bigger part of. Thank you. This. Thank you. Uh, next up, Thomas, please go ahead. Maybe also mentioned already to ask again. You mentioned the, 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 the game, Inspector X, compared with, with smartphones. Is it possible to, to play the game which, uh, with smartphones, with each technology, with each operating system as well, Windows and uh, Android and, I, and iOS phones? Also with, uh, or is it restricted to to Android and iOS uh, app phones, for example, and Android and iPhones. Um, yes, it's possible to run Inspector X in which platform? In any platform is a is a web app, so uh, it runs in a page of. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. It's mobile web app. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. And question from Ishti, um, as I don't see anybody else in the queue. If there is, please go ahead. So um, I probably missed it. Is this tool uh, for software documentation inspection or can it be used for code inspection? Uh, can be used uh, for code and uh requirements to any text or artifact code or or requirement can I ask a follow-up question uh, so in, in case of code inspection um who builds the game like uh the answers or or the question themselves for the code review is it the i mean who creates the game um, you you just need to create a taxonomy of the fact. In 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 the case of a, a code review, you in a code inspection, you you will need to to uh, register a taxonomy of the fact uh, uh, that um, a taxonomy of the fact force. Uh, for code for code the document <laughs> like uh, like like the Jones taxonomy. Okay. The Jones taxonomy of the facts is for for uh, code for code. Um, you just need to to you you can't play the. Sorry, I think we had uh, a short feedback. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, for any or any type of document, you you just need to to register a taxonomy of the fact, uh, customize it or one already no. So. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Right. Any yes. other questions? Okay, Thomas, please go ahead. Okay, more, 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 more of a further question. You showed the approach. You um, it's on code, code inspection with uh, for, for, Java, for Java code. So it is possible to also to use it for other programming languages. For example, also for for, for Python, for C sharp. You can also code inspection in diff, for different programming languages and for which which programming languages are supported. Is it rest yeah. restricted to Java or so it's generally for all object oriented oriented program languages or also other language languages. Um, you can use the other language 
Um, and you can use the question taxonomy. As long as there is a language related taxonomy, you can register in the program, in the game. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Iman, please go ahead next. Um, I wanted to ask what gamification elements that you added to Inspector X 2.0 that was not in Inspector X, and like, why do you think that those were um, important to add to this version of Zilla King? Um, the hanging, the chat elements that in, in the first version, um, the, the, renewal, the, the renewal process isn't um, in the in the inspection process in the discrimination stage there is no chat and there is no way to communicate in the re reunion process so the chat is, is a is is an element it did not exist in the first version The hanging and the and now in this version, the the moderator can choose the can choose the inspectors by the level of expertise of each inspector is in, in, available in the planning stage. So the the moderator can the moderator can uh, choose the the inspector based on the ability of uh, ability of inspection. Right, did that answer the question? Great. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, I saw Carolina, you had the uh, raise, the hand raised. Uh, yeah, I had a question, but it's actually almost the same as this last one. All right, okay. So okay. All right. Any other questions? I do have one question, uh, might be a bit difficult to answer, but um, uh, as you mentioned, you can use it for um, software process inspection, but also code inspection. Um, at what stage do you think um, this would be most effective to implement in a software development uh, project? Um. I think that any of this, I think the requirement is one, one important too. And just like in, in, a, in, a, in a class, you are a professional and you have to, to um, teach your, your students about software inspect, inspection. And the requirements, the, the inspection of requirements is a, uh, inspection is a is an effective inspection that uh, will will affect the whole the whole process the the whole development process. Okay, thank you. Uh, complementing uh, his answer because we use in requirements and more in coding uh, experimentations in some classes and it's very I think it's in all the process you can because you just have to have the taxonomy and uh, then you put uh, whatever you want as a document and show what is the problem and what happened? So you can use for all inspections phase. And, right. and I just would mm -hmm. like to add that um, the the requirement is the better, um, and it's because the big is in on the beginning of the in the inspection in the process. So errors don't propagate to other stages. But it can, it can indeed support any other stage that involves text-based text artifacts. OK, 
Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, let's see if there are any more questions from other parties. All right, looks like not. Then thank you again for your presentation and also um, for the previous two presentations um, that would conclude our paper session one. So I stretched a little bit um, this section of the workshop. We would have planned a uh, breakout session. So I've prepared three rooms. Question is we have one hour left. Um, maybe question also to Juan and uh, I don't know, Patricia or Bastian, if you have any opinion on uh, how to proceed. If it's okay, I would open maybe for a few um, discussion groups and see what um, the groups come up with. Well, I have no instructions specifically about what to do now <laughs> either. So I'm like you, Moritz. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, I'll share quickly the um, one page I received for the session. Ah, um, okay, sorry. So Leonardo, I will kick you out of the screen share and take over if that's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. One. Okay, hopefully this is visible. So this was alternatively, um, there's also the uh, industry point of view session happening concurrently starting like roughly now. So um, it's, I guess it's up to you. And the other All right, All right. So then, um, so this was planned for um, uh, roughly 90 minutes um discussion about uh, topics um a bit over the horizon what would have been covered so far um then i would maybe poll the audience quickly <laughs> uh because as we can see there is a parallel session if you uh would like to um continue with the breakout session can you give me a um a thumbs up and I will see how many thumbs I get. Yeah, I also saw the yes, no feature. That's something new that I, right. Zoom adding features. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, you can see actually this might be a better way. Sorry for that. Um, under participants button, if you see the list of uh, participants, you have a yes or no um, option. Uh, could you please click either of those? So then we can Question. get a. Uh... What, what are we yesing or knowing to? Ah, sorry. So. Um, to continue the breakout session, yes or no? Oh, okay, this is sort of anonymous. I think I see it only on my side. That's great. Three no's, two yeses, but only five votes altogether. Right. Come on, humans. <laughs> Okay, so. Okay, I think we see a trend. So, um, yeah, let's maybe wrap this up and uh, we have the chance then to join, um, as Bastian was saying, yeah, industry point of views of engineering and lifelong learning, I think, starting now. Yep. All right. So, then, yeah, thank you everyone for joining and discussing, participating, presenting. Um, and let me give you a digital clap again. 
And, and a particular thanks to you, Moritz, for, for a just in time taking over the chairing of the session. We much appreciate this, all of us. Thank you much. Oh, of course, yeah. That was good good thinking to put um, a few like strategic people around to cover all the sections. So no problem. All right. Then uh, hope one. to see everyone in other sessions again. And I'll close this uh it's in a right. second. We meet again at, at, six, at 6 Central yes. European time. At 6 o'clock, there's the second half of the workshop on games for software engineering and education and training. And um, Bastian, if you're okay with that, I would jump in and serve as session chair if you need someone. Why, why okay. would I not be okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> you have my trust and my belief and my faith and everything you want. <laughs> Good. So I can just fail completely. Thank you very much. No well, pressure. It's up to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So hope to hope to see you all maybe in the sessions for industry point of view right now from four to five, and then we'll have an hour break for dinner from five to six German time. Meet you back at six p.m. Central European time for workshop on games. There's a separate. I think um, there's a separate Zoom conference already set up for that. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.